Preacher here. Join me for God's word on my heart. Preacher here. It's time for God's word on my heart. And you know, as Christians, we're to love one another. We're to unite together and to help one another along the way. But all too often, I've been in Christian circles. I'll pull you aside and say, hey, you got to watch out for this guy over here. He might do this, this, or this. Like they're trying to warn you, right? Or, hey, you know, I, I don't think this guy's living right. Well, you know, one, as a Christian, if you truly are a Christian and you have that concern, you should go share with that person. Go talk with that person. Go tell them, hey, look, I don't think you're doing this right. But two, we're supposed to help each other along the way. We all sin. We all have shortcomings. We all make mistakes. And we're not to go around backbiting on each other, gossiping and talking to each other. No, we're supposed to help one each other along the way, one another. I want to share a little bit out of Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. It says, Therefore a prisoner for the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy to which you have been called. Hey, you know what we've been called to do? We've been called to love like Jesus. And you know, Jesus loved us so much that he put that love into action. He gave his life for us while we were still enemies of God, while we were still sinners, while we were still filthy people. Not worthy of that kind of love. And we're called to walk in a manner that loves God with our heart, mind, and soul. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. To love as Christ loved us. That's the manner which we've been called. Verse 2. It says, with all humility... Humility and gentleness with patience, bearing with one another in love. And I love this because it says we might have to humble ourselves and be gentle to people. And to bear with one another in love. You know, when I think of, of bearing with somebody, I think of somebody who might get on your nerves. And you're gritting your teeth and you're like, man, I just, I don't know how to handle this person. I don't want to, but bearing can be hard. But we're to bear one another with one another in love. Stop and think about that. If you're bearing somebody, somebody's bearing you. They're, they're putting up with you. But they're there to help you grow. To help you learn. It says, Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We're not to go around stirring up problems. Not to go around gossiping. That's not God's way. Or backbiting on people. Or telling stories about them. That's all of the devil. It says, This is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope. That belongs to your call. The Lord of one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Think about that for a second. We've all in need of God's grace. We all fall short. Not one of us is better than another. And that's why we got to bear with one another. Because that person, if they're a true believer, if, if, is a sinner just like you. They fall short of God's glory just like you. But they're receiving God's grace just as you are. God's forgiveness. God's gift. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascends far above the heavens. That 
he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry and building up the body of Christ. We're to build up the body of Christ. We're to lift each other up. We're to help each other out. Now, does this mean if your brother's sinning that you can't say anything? No. If somebody's sinning, we're to correct them. It says if you see somebody sinning and you don't say anything, that's a sin. We're to let them know, hey, look, God is not going to bless that. But we're to help them through it. We're to love them through it. We're to let God work in our lives. Let God shine in our life. It says, until we attain the unity of faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, mature manhood, to the measure of the statue of fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. We're to be Christ-like. We're to be holy as Christ was holy. We're to love those who don't deserve it. To forgive those who don't deserve it. To show mercy to people who don't deserve it. And why is that? Because God did the same for us. And if we're going to be Christ-like, we got to do the same for people that don't deserve it because we didn't. Anyway, if you if you don't know whether or not you're going to heaven, let me tell you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, so much that he put that love into action. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes, that includes you, should not perish but have everlasting life says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, if you start a relationship with Christ Jesus, if you turn to him with a heart that's willing to change, God will grow in your life. And it starts with believing. Believing that Jesus is the way. Romans 10.9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Start a relationship with Christ Jesus today if you haven't. Makes an eternity a difference. Be blessed and always find your victory in Jesus.